While we're waiting for the glue to dry and the whole rear section to take shape, we're going to start cutting in the two inch wide pieces that we're using for the sides. The main contour that we're going to get right on the money will be around with a tea bucket and we're going to leave everything else high. Again, we'll sand down to the plywood, which will give us perfect contour from the two inch all the way across the flat surface and then the other, the other radius as well. I'm tracing the cardboard template that I used for the plywood onto the two inch foam. This is going to be an accurate copy here, but when you go to cut it out, be sure to cut it larger again because we're going to sand it down to the same size as the plywood. I'm using a long adjustable razor knife to cut through the two inch foam sheet. Try to make the cut in one pass for a smoother edge. If the foam is cut completely, it will break freely away from the rest of the sheet. We're fitting the side pieces in place. Rob is working this by trial and error to make sure that the contour matches the rear of the bucket exactly. He's got some good experience with this type of work. However, it's the same as anyone else can do it. You just take off little bits at a time until it fits and matches up perfectly. I was applying a good even coat of the glue. There's really no, no such thing as too much. At this point, again, you just don't want it anywhere near the edges where you're going to have to sand the, uh, sand the high spots. So we've got quite a bit on there. We've already sanded everything to fit. And I'm kind of sliding it all into place. Help the glue even out. And firm pressure is all it takes to make it stick. Okay. And when the glue dries, we'll just sand with the rest of it all to contour. After the glue dries, the toothpicks must be removed so they don't obstruct the sanding operations. They were there just long enough to hold the shape. This one seems like it's glued in. Okay. I'm doing some preliminary trimming on the edges using the razor knife. The sanding goes quickly, but any large pieces you can remove with the knife will speed things up. Do not try this in the large, broad center section. You've heard me allude to the sanding blocks throughout the whole process so far. And now I'm actually at the point where I need to use them. And I might as well show you how I made them. This was nothing more than a one by four that I ripped lengthwise so it would be the same width as the sandpaper. I then screwed, I made it a little bit longer, wider, so I could have some extra room to go side to side on the back. And then just screwed the leftover portion of the board with drywall screws and a little bit of glue to it. It's a perfectly flat surface. I picked through about 40 boards until I found the one I was actually going to use. Again, I don't want to have anything uh, off or anything, that's going to be my truing surface. The second sanding block I made was just a standard, it was a 2x6, and I just took a compass with a 2 inch radius and drew that onto the board. And this is the one I'm going to use to shape the edge contours after I've already got all the rest of the foam to the shape that I'm looking for. As I begin to sand, notice that I use only a side to side motion. Keep the block level and work all the way across the trunk. Do not lift one side of the block to concentrate the sanding on one spot as this will distort the contour. Position yourself wherever necessary to keep the block true. If you choose to run the block front to back, be sure both sides of the block progress absolutely evenly. When sanding the glue joints, focus the effort on the glue itself. Do not try to tip the block into the foam and gouge it. Move periodically to remove the glue dust as this can cut away at the foam as well. Soon the foam will be sanded flush with the plywood. You will feel the sanding block vibrate more as it tries to sand the template. Stop soon after reaching this point as further sanding will just erode the foam near the wood creating low spots. This occurs because foam dust trapped under the block tends to accumulate by the template and is abrasive enough itself to continue sanding in those areas. When the top is done, use the radius sanding block to shape the sides of the trunk. Work carefully keeping the block flat as it is very easy to gouge the surrounding foam. Continue sanding the edge until the radius block hits the plywood. Periodically check how the contour is progressing and stop when all the effort is just on the template. 
Drag a perfectly true steel rule evenly along the plywood looking for daylight. If there is no light, the foam is smooth and the sanding is complete. Actually, what we've decided to do at this point is to French in or recess the license plate area. Uh, we were flipping through a magazine here, just killing time, and saw that it was done on a couple cars, and now is the perfect time to do it before there's any other fiberglass skin. The next thing I need to do is continue to cut out around the plate area, and I'm going to use a straight edge to make sure that everything works out just fine. Cut all four sides this way. I'm fortunate to be able to get one hand behind the foam to press out the license plate. If access had been limited, I could have pried out the foam from the front, but it is easier to damage the foam that way. While I was trimming it, the knife got away from me, and I have some small cuts on the back side, and so before I insert this and uh, recess the license plate, I'm just going to put a little extra glue down inside of there. So you can do quite a bit to, with the foam and still have it work okay for you. This will never be seen, it's just something that will keep it from coming apart perhaps, or whatever within the trunk. And then I'm going to run a glue, a bead of glue, along the entire inside. I've got glue uniformly all the way around the license plate. I'm just going to put it back in the hole. But as you can see in real time, five minutes or less, I made a nice recessed license plate. Where? This will be mounted later. The shape has been totally developed in the foam at this stage. And so, while it still remains real fragile, the next step is to re reinforce them with a fiberglass fabric. I'm just going to use a regular general purpose polyester resin and the appropriate MUKP hardener. The fabric I'm going to use to reinforce it is a 10 ounce uh, fiberglass fabric. I'm actually going to put down the schedule I'm going to use is two layers of the 10 ounce fabric followed by one layer of a 6 ounce fabric. The 6 ounce is used because the finer weave uh, will be easier to fill with primers and other body fillers so that you don't see that printing through paint later on. If I haven't said it already, you might as well keep any template you've developed to this point because they come in handy later. Uh, I, I'm going to cut the, the fiberglass for the side so that I don't waste material. I'm going to follow right along the template. And again, I'm going to cut it a little bit oversized because I'm going to have it overlap where it hangs around the contour and everything like that. But uh, I'll use the actual template. The other one I'm going to keep is the license plate template because I'm going to actually make inlays when I go to put it in the car. And so I'll pre-cut some fabric, I'm going to work on the sides first, and then I'm going to drape one layer of the cloth straight down over the back of it, and uh, you'll see that next.